What are the five smallest backrooms levels? When you think of the backrooms, you probably think of a huge, expansive place with infinite rooms and hallways and roads and environments. But in this video, I'm going to be going over five of the smallest and tiniest backrooms levels that you should probably never go to if you have claustrophobia. Let's get into it, shall we? Backrooms level 44 is classified as a class 3 difficulty and is unsafe with a pretty low entity count. And the entities are not the dangerous part of the level. The level is thought to quote, be intrinsically connected with the front rooms, or with real life. It looks like a completely bare and empty mall outlet that's kinda run down, but it also kinda looks like a big office space. Only half the lights work, but the half that does work doesn't make that loud buzzing that most of the backrooms levels make, especially level zero. Now the lights do buzz a little bit, but not nearly as loud as the other lights, which is important because that buzz is a huge part of the backrooms, and for this level not to have it, it's worth documenting. There are window entities in the darker sections of the levels, but so far nothing bad has happened near them, nothing too bad at least, so they're considered pretty safe. Now all of the active window entities here show moving pictures of real life behind them, so if you look out of them, you'll see kind of like a slideshow of real life, and that's why this level is connected to reality. There's actually a theory that the windows themselves are some kind of gateway back to the world, but no tests have been done to show show it, and I'm not trying to jump through a window just because I see the real world. If I've learned one thing, it's to not trust the backrooms. This entire level has been classified as non-Euclidean, meaning that traveling and mapping out and just looking at the level is pretty much impossible since the layouts are always changing, and if you walk in one direction, you'll end up in a completely different direction than the way you walked. And on this level specifically, the glitchy non-Euclidean effects get worse the further you get from the level entrance. So where you spawn in on the level won't be too bad, but the further you wander out, the worse this effect will get, so you might not be able to find your way back just watch out like i said earlier this level is completely empty and barren there's literally nothing here and that's still true except there is a weird fluid that's made up of unknown atomic compounds and this fluid is in a bunch of different rooms on this level and it looks kind of like liquid coal it's a thick black liquid it's very viscous and acidic and it has the ability to corrode cardboard and wood uh quickly and in some cases it's actually been seen dissolving the walls and ceilings of this level uh yeah that's pretty weird i gotta be honest so it goes without saying that you should avoid it at all costs now as far as creatures go on the level it's actually pretty decently rare to see a creature but when there is one it's most likely going to be a wrangler now wranglers are these huge things with a bunch of arms that burrow down into the ground and stalk their prey i've done a full short on them so i'll link that below but in the darker parts of the hallways or rooms there can actually be any entity from the back rooms it's just that the wrangler is the most common now those window entities that I talked about earlier also have a really, really strange effect because recently there's been multiple witnesses saying that they saw a silhouette figure behind the window pane. It's only showed up when the situation that the wanderer was in was really anxious or tense. And when you look at it, you get really weird feelings of liminality and anxiety. Nobody really knows what this silhouette is or why it's here, but it's thought that it could represent a person's fear about not being in reality. Either way, it's really creepy to just have a random shadow behind a window in, a, in, the, in the back rooms. I mean, that's that's creepy. And the entity has sometimes shown that it can talk with a wanderer through short, repeated phrases like, he is destroying my home, he is going to bring doom to us all, only when you escape can you find him, reality will shatter along with my home, this place has lost its safety, you must stop him before he takes over. So, I mean, that's pretty terrifying to listen to. It's also really vague, and no one really knows what it means. And also, the context of those phrases doesn't make any sense, because there's nothing actually to too dangerous about this current level that we can see. I don't know, maybe the shadow can see something we can't. Maybe it's trying to warn you of something. Not sure, man.
There's only one outpost here from Meg, and they try to study that thick, corrosive liquid from earlier, and around 20 people live in this outpost. And to enter the level, you can walk through a randomly appearing metal door on level 0, and to exit, you can go back through a similar metal door, which will lead you this time to level 9 or 11. Good stuff. So Backrooms level 18 is classified as a class 1 difficulty and is a safish overall level if you do it right. The level looks different to every person who gets to it. Now even though it looks different, it's still the same theme to everybody because it typically looks like a memory or a set of memories from their life typically from ages 2 to 5. But the most common description is that it looks like a daycare or a preschool or a babysitter's house or an old bed or a playground. You know, just kid stuff. And if you don't have any specific memories of those kind of things, then the level itself will just be a blank void, which is kind of sad. Throughout the level, there are always numerous voices that are whispering. There's no body, specifically making these voices, but you can hear them in your head. They can whisper anything, but the main thing they normally whisper are your biggest regrets or your biggest mistake. No one knows how a random backrooms level can know what your biggest mistake or your biggest regret is, but apparently they know everything about you, and on top of this, the level can also resurface memories that you literally had forgotten about or had pushed out of your mind, like a childhood pet or something like that. Now obviously, this can mess up someone's mind if they're hearing voices about their biggest regret in life, so just do your best to ignore that whispering, and if you do that, then you're gonna have a pretty fun time reliving your old childhood memories. On the other side of that coin, the level is apparently addictive to some wanderers, and they choose to spend all of their time here, which technically can work since there's food and stuff in your memories, but honestly, I, I can't say that I blame them for wanting to stay here and live in their childhood memories forever instead of going back out to the back rooms because it's safer here and it's nostalgic. There's only one entity on the level and it's a plush sentient sapient dinosaur that if you find it, it'll lead you to food and water, but it's pretty rare to come across. The one outpost here is called The Children, and it's a group made up of around 20 to 25 people, and the people who are in the group are the ones that stay here forever. Even though each person sees a different memory, they can all still see each other, which is pretty nice. To enter at this weird core level, well, there's no concrete way yet. The only way that might work is if you get a random resurgence or a random recollection of memories from your childhood while being on any other level in the back rooms. So if you're feeling really nostalgic, you might get sent here. To leave this level, you can find that plush dino and they'll take you to an exit. Or you can just walk through wherever you came from or do again whatever you did to get here since no one knows exactly how to do that. I gotta say, this level is pretty creepy but wholesome at the same time since it just replays old childhood memories. It's depressing, but at the same time, it's not. I don't know. I feel like I'd visit this level, not gonna lie. Backrooms level 974 is classified as class 1, safe, secure, and is devoid of entities, except one entity, obviously. The level has several decently sized rooms, and they all have the same pink color scheme throughout. There's no doors that lead to the quote-unquote outside of the level, and there's also no windows that look outside. Where the windows are, there are paintings that would represent what is outside, so there's no windows. The level isn't very big, and and there's only a few rooms that can even be accessed fully. There's a normal sized bedroom, a master bedroom, two bathrooms, a living room, and a dining room with a kitchen right next to it. The plumbing on this level and electricity both work, and there's even a good Wi-Fi connection. Nice. So wanderers are encouraged to use these amenities because the next levels are not going to be very safe. I made videos about level 998 and level 999, so if you want to go check those out, they're pretty crazy. They'll be in the description below. The entire level is decorated with a pastel pink color, and there's these characters that are from reality that are on the walls as well, like Senrio and Senex. No clue what those are, but cool. There's also some consumable stuff on this level inside of the pantry and the refrigerator. The food is always in good condition as well, and it can be eaten, and whenever something's taken from the pantry or the fridge, it replaces itself by an unknown means. Nice. Obviously, the only entity here is named Kitty, 
Kitty is about 3.2 meters tall, or around 10 feet tall, and is a humanoid entity with extremely long limbs, and they've got no hands or feet, so it's just sticks. Nice. Kitty's skin is matte black, and it kind of looks like leather, and there are no visible facial features on Kitty. However, it seems like the entity can hear and smell, just like normal people can, but it's unknown how. Kitty moves extremely smoothly and quickly, like disturbingly quickly and smoothly, and is known to jump scare wanderers who don't know that it lives here, but so far, Kitty's not shown any aggression towards people yet, and just watches wanderers from a distance with kind of a curious attitude. There are no bases here, and the only way to enter the level is if the wanderer has quote-unquote something cute in their possession when they travel between two different levels. And if they do have something cute on them when they travel between two different levels, there's a small chance they'll be sent here. To exit this level, you have to give Kitty that cute item that you had that brought you here. Once you do, you'll wake up on a safe level. So make sure you've got cute stuff on you, I guess. So to summarize, Kitty's house is a level that's just the inside of a house with a pink theme and cute artwork all over the walls. The level has food and water available and the plumbing and electricity and Wi-Fi all work pretty well, and it's safe to rest in. And the only entity here is Kitty, who's a giant slender humanoid that doesn't attack but still looks pretty creepy. Nice. So Ashes to Ashes, or level negative 319, is classified as a class 5 difficulty, and is very, very unsafe and unsecure, and it's really dangerous because of non-entity hazards. So you don't really have to worry about creatures or stuff like that attacking you, uh, it's the level itself that's gonna attack you. The level takes place inside of a really old and broken down house that's all covered in a thick layer of dust, ash, and other kinds of trash and waste. There are three bedrooms in this house, one and a half bathrooms, and there's also a basement, an attic, a living room, and a dining room, as well as a kitchen and office, but you can't even get to the basement or attic, so that's kind of lame. The temperature inside of this disgusting house is always pretty cold. It stays around 47 degrees Fahrenheit, or negative 8.3 degrees Celsius. And on top of it being cold, it also feels really damp and it smells dank and just awful, kind of like mold, as you can imagine. Now, no one knows what the outside of the house looks like because every exit is sealed with some kind of impenetrable material. And from what you'll see in a second, you don't really have time to try to exit the house like by going at the door, so no one really cares or knows what's outside. When this level was found, there was a big note carved into the table in the kitchen that pretty much says who was there and why they think they won't make it out of the level alive. One of the wanderers was 13, one was 16, one was 25, and one was 31, and that 13 and 16 year old were siblings. But that note includes some really creepy details and honestly just some terrifying stuff about why this level is dangerous. I'm just going to read you the last paragraph. And it says, I do not want to be forgotten, so find a way out. This place ages you by one year every five minutes. I timed it. I've been trying to find a way out for six hours now. I watched my sister unalive about 30 minutes ago, and she since has crumbled into ash and dust. I'm not too far behind, but I'm exhausted. I understand now why my grandfather was tired all the time. I'm going to unalive here. I made my peace with that. I'm too tired to go any further. I guess I wrote this to beg you to find a way out. When you get out of here, tell the others not to come to level negative 319. If they happen to find themselves here, tell them to find an exit as soon as possible. Uh, so yeah, just like that note said, this level makes you age one year older every five minutes that passes when you're there. So if you stay in the level for six hours, uh, you'd be getting older really, really quickly. And this anomaly is why there's ashes all over the ground, because when you are alive, you literally disintegrate and fall into ash and add to that ash pile. So that is that that's so creepy. I'm like, wow, that is disturbing. There's also been some researchers that got stuck in this level after that first note was left, and they left some information on the walls written in blue crayons. Apparently, most people aren't alive at around age 85, according to this note, but one of these explorers' colleagues was actually earlier than that, and they aren't alive at age 60 from diabetes, which means that this level can make you have illnesses that you'd get normally while aging in real life, but you get it way faster here because it ages you so much quicker. The researcher who wrote those findings on the wall apparently developed some kind of illness themselves, and it was some kind of heart disease because of the rapid aging. And well, 
you can guess what happened to both of them. The weird thing is that this aging isn't just for humans because it affects entities that are here too. One wanderer went to the bathroom on this level and found an old hound in the bathroom, ran away from it, and then the hound started chasing and then just disintegrated because it was so old. And he just watched it turn right to dust. So, yeah. Now the first person to ever make it out of this level alive and to escape and stuff was named Wanderer BB and apparently he was 14 years old when he got sent here and when he left he was 38 years old because he was trapped in the level for two hours which made him become 24 years older than he was when he got here. He still has no idea how he got to this level, but the good news is he does know how he escaped. The way he got out was he went to the upstairs bathroom and found the mirror there, and the mirror was covered in dust and ash, obviously, so he wiped the mirror down, cleaned the ash off, and then got no-clipped instantly to level zero. He was 24 years older, but he was alive, which is better than what everybody else could say. There's no way to tell how many wanderers have actually gotten to this level and never escaped because the entry is still unknown, like no one knows how you get here, but it is imperative and very important that the second you get sent here, you run upstairs to that mirror and you hope that it works to send you out, because if it doesn't, you can age 24 years in 2 hours, so, yeah. <laughs> level 8.1, which obviously is a sub-level of level 8. This entry starts with a notice directly from Meg themselves that reads as follows. This page has been partially expunged due to an unexpected, unsystematic total collapse and destruction of level 8.1 because of an inadvertent fusion of this sublayer and level 8 whose effect was firstly witnessed on February 12th 2013 a separate document is to be shown to the general public that overviews the potential hazards that the collision has consequently caused these environmental hazards in level 8 are only prone to occur near the initial entrance of level 8.1 before it was destroyed the meg team now since I've read that really fun message, let's get into the level explanation. But be warned, because level 8.1 is a very weird conglomeration, sub-level type thing. It's described by wanderers as a really complex system of claustrophobic hallways that kind of look like caves, but they're really tiny and you can barely fit through them. This 8.1 area is different than other sub-areas because it doesn't actually seem to be related to level 8 at all, like not in the physical sense at least. Instead, the thought is that they barely are fused together somehow, since on rare occasions you can see a connecting hallway from level 8 to 8.1, but I'll get into that later, it's really unstable, and it's really bad. This partial fusion of level 8 and 8.1 also cause very weird auditory hallucinations and visual hallucinations and distortions. These distortions happen on levels 8 and 8.1 near where the 8.1 entrance is, so Meg advises everyone to avoid any exploration of these distortion areas because they're pretty dangerous. And it doesn't really sound that fun to me. Now, as I said earlier, level 8.1 itself is a mixed jumble of winding hallways that end in dead ends or they loop around and go around each other. The rock that these halls are carved through seems to be made out of a bedrock which is unnaturally durable and hard to break. The bedrock leaks almond water in certain spots, but it doesn't just leak almond water, it leaks a really weird red liquid that smells terrible that's been described as sulfuric. So it smells like sulfur. Nasty. The almond water that leaks through the rocks sometimes makes sinkholes happen or ceilings to collapse because, you know, it breaks down the rock over time. And these things happen frequently, which makes mapping out a safe path in this area almost impossible. The rock hallways also cause those auditory and visual hallucination distortion things that I talked about earlier. Sometimes these things sound like crashing rocks. Sometimes they sound like shrill whimpering. And this whimpering is so distorted and so loud that it causes some people to instantly pass out on hearing it. The frequencies have also broken ceramic objects and can even cause you to have complete derealization after just 10 minutes of exposure. No one knows the source of these sounds, but it's assumed that it has something to do with the fusion of level 8.1 and level 8 together and some kind of 
disimbalance thing. The hallways also have a really weird physical anomaly in some areas and will cause pretty gross things to happen. Be warned. Like if you touch a wall, you could get sucked into the rocks and instantly just be encased in rock and instantly unalive. Grody. There is another part of this sublevel, as if it couldn't get any more dangerous, and the area is called Layer 2. This refers to the actual space between the intersection of level 8 and 8.1, like I mentioned earlier. So this Layer 2 is where the two different levels connect together. Those distortions from earlier, specifically the auditory ones, are way more noticeable here, way louder. And it's unknown why it's so much louder here, but it can be assumed that wherever the source is, it's here. Layer 2 actually has longer, skinnier hallways than the rest of level 8.1 or even level 8, and there's no light source here, which is the opposite of 8.1, the main area, because there's just this some kind of light source through the whole level there. But this area, Layer 2, is dark. Like, real dark. The nasty red sulfur stuff from earlier also leaks way more in this level, and it causes pretty deep puddles to form on the floor. The echoing off the walls and the auditory distortions make it impossible to document what kind of entities are here or how many of them there are, and there's no info on them literally at all. There's nothing. So who knows what lurks in the shadows? Gotcha. Maybe the creepiest part of level 8.1 and layer 2 is that there's been no documented instances of people escaping. So for all we know, people could get trapped there for an eternity in the winding, claustrophobic halls. Creepy to think about. Now the way this article's information was apparently gathered was by, quote, a method of analog communication via the use of certain devices. Okay then, I like how specific you are. Kinda goofy, but we're vibing. The main theory on there not being any documented escapes is that there's actually another layer called Layer 3 outside of the bedrock walls that perhaps has an exit, maybe? Or maybe there isn't this area and people are just doomed to wander the small hallways for an eternity. Nice! Also, there are no bases, entities, entrances, or exits documented. Just letting you know that I did not forget to add them to the video, they just don't exist. So I feel like a sublevel this crazy definitely needs a summary so you can understand it better, so I'm gonna try to simplify it as much as possible. Sublevel 8.1 is somehow barely connected and fused to level 8 through a weird distorted area called Layer 2. Level 8.1 has a bunch of paths that cut through bedrock with walls and ceilings, and there's really weird audio and physical distortions that occur. Layer 2 also has these weird distortions, but they're way louder and more intense. And Layer 2 is darker than Level 8.1, and both areas are extremely unstable. But to get to Level 8.1, you would have had to go through Layer 2 as kind of like a corridor area. You got it? Does it make sense? Me neither. All I know is that it's terrifying to think that if you come here, you might not be able to escape. Backrooms level negative three, or of light and darkness, is a very, very dangerous place. And dangerous is an understatement. It's classified as a class mirage difficulty for having psychological tor- reality warping geometry and deceptive influences and i'll explain what all that means in a second but pretty much it means that nothing is as it seems the level is located deep into the back room somewhere and it physically might be the smallest level ever found cut up into a bunch of parts in fact it's made up of a bunch of small cubicle rooms pretty much just small squares each of these cubic rooms has four walls, except the walls are not just material, they're mirrors. So all four walls in each room you're in will be mirrors. And the mirrors are facing inwards towards each other, which is creating an infinite reflection on all sides. Now it's not the mirrors themselves that make the level creepy, it's actually what you see in the mirror. When you're in the first cube, you'll see your own reflection, pretty normal. And you'll see that for the first few rooms at least. And the good news is, you aren't stuck 
stuck in one room forever. But that's also bad news because it just gets worse. Now to exit the rooms, you'll need to look for a part of the mirror that doesn't look completely solid. It kind of looks like it's waving water and then you can just walk directly through it. And if you do walk through the mirror, you'll be sent to an exact copy of that same room. Except each time you do this, go from one room through the mirror to the next room, you'll notice that the mirror will become more cracked and more imperfect. And you'll also notice something creepy looking back at you in the reflection. And it's not your own reflection at this point. Because as you get deeper into this labyrinth of cubic rooms, you'll start to see a more mangled abomination of yourself. Like a decayed zombie or skeleton looking back at you instead of your normal reflection. Each time the image will get more and more distorted and gross and ugh. Kind of like you're looking into a funhouse mirror from a carnival, except it's way creepier and creepier. It also doesn't really make any sense that you can see your reflection because there's no light in the cube rooms. Instead, the light comes from the reflection itself. And since there's just infinite reflections, you can hardly tell where anything is. It's hard to find any depth perception. In fact, your brain will be so overwhelmed that you'll get terrible migraines and headaches. And on top of those migraines, you'll get confused and terrified and scared, which will eventually make you have panic attacks and, you know, you'll go nuts. So yeah, that's not fun. You'll eventually get so far deep into these small cubic rooms and these mirrors to the point where the reflections of you aren't even reflections. They act like their own entity and kind of move on their own. They almost kind of shadow what you do, except they don't move exactly when you move and they look gross and disgusting and they seem to just move around behind the mirror as they will. Of course, at first, you'll think that this is because you're going crazy or losing your mind and you won't think anything of it. But as you keep going deeper and deeper, you'll start to accept that they're not your reflection and that they're trying to hurt you. And at that point, these reflections will start to talk to you and verbally talk you. They'll sling insults at you, they'll give you false information, they'll scream at the top of their lungs, and keep in mind, this whole time you'll be trapped in different rooms with each wall being a mirror, so it's not like you can go anywhere. And sometimes these entities in the mirror will even convince the wanderer to walk to places in the floor that aren't solid and can be fallen through. So they'll literally walk you to a hole that you can fall through and hurt yourself. And if you do that, guess what? You'll land in another mirror room with more reflections. If you don't find the exit to the level, then you could be stuck in this infinite loop of small mirrored room with monsters looking back at you from the mirrors. So you're probably going to want to listen to the exit section. Now this is a quote from a wanderer that came here that they jotted down in a journal. The voice beckoned me to free it, repeatedly and desperately telling me, please, you're making a mistake. Don't just sit there. Let me out of this prison. Don't end up like me. When I opened my eyes, I saw my reflection persistently slamming her blood fist into the wall to my left. The glass was cracking more with each successive punch and I stumbled back in fear unprepared to confront whatever could step through that wall once it broke. However, I must have backed up too much such that I went through the wall. Into the same room, in fact. Though my rogue reflection was gone. My nightmares did not end there, unfortunately. All around me, I saw some mirror walls gradually fracturing. Even when my reflections on those walls displayed my same panicked expressions and conformed to match every move I made. What an adrenaline rush. I traversed this maze of mirrors for what seemed to be several minutes, running towards mirrors that lack visible cracks and just closing my eyes before I made impact. Was I escaping my own self or was it something else? So yeah, as you can see, this person is crazy. They're running away from their own reflection and this will happen the deeper you get to this level. To enter, you have to walk through a mirror that's not made out of glass on level 365 and to exit, it's pretty hard. You have to find something to break the mirror that you're staring at and hope that behind the mirror is a tiled bathroom or tiled room behind it. And if you see that tiled room, it'll be some kind of bathroom in a random backrooms level. And if you plan on walking through it, you better hurry because the mirrors here heal and fix themselves. So you have to be careful when breaking them because you don't want to hurt yourself and you don't want to be trapped. Just make sure you jump through it after you break it. Sometimes the mirrors can lead to nothing, just a blank void. And if you go through that, huh, no one knows where you go. So that's fun.